Hey, it's Dave, and welcome to Classic Bass Lines. This week we're going to take a look at The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. This is a great bass line played by John McVie. This is off Fleetwood Mac's 1977 album, Rumors. This song was written by sort of splicing together various snippets of tunes and recordings that had been done by the different band members, so it has a lot of different cool contrasty parts in it. There are three sections to the song. There's the verse, there's the chorus, and then there's the coda, which has the famous bass line that everyone knows from this. Definitely one of the coolest things about this song is that there's just no bass line on the verse. No bass. No bass? That's right. The bass doesn't come in until the chorus, and what that does is it builds up a lot of tension because there's this cool spaced out guitar riff and there's the kick drum hitting quarters and there's just no bass and then when the bass finally comes in it really releases a lot of the tension that was built up and it comes in with these like pumping quarter notes which just really drive the tune at that point. Follow the link in the description to get the tab for this so you can follow along. That's at classicbasslines.com. So, there's no bass line on the verse, so this lesson will start with the chorus. He plays this line a little bit differently every time he played it, so I'm just going to show you what he played the first time through, and then I'll give you some ideas for a couple variations that he does on it. So, here's the chorus slowly. So that starts with this A, and the thing about those A's, you really want to get the note length right on that. So the notes are separated, but not really short. It's a full note, it's a round note, it has a nice good attack, strong attack, but not harsh. And it's really, it's really such a useful note length to learn. That one will serve you well. I recommend spending some time with the recording and really trying to match that. So it's all those A's. Then there's a slide up to the E. E, D, C. Then some C's there. Then up to the D. Some variations you can do on that A quarter note are like throwing in a quick little G's in there. And then there's occasional little variations when it's going from the C to the D. You can sort of play around with whether you're doing 16th notes or 8th notes on the C chord and the D chord. One key thing to get right about this is after the first chorus, when it goes back to the opening riff, is you do not hit that E. It's it's building up all that tension, and then it doesn't release it. It keeps the tension high. When you're building up to that, and then you don't play the E, it feels like you were just open the airlock and got shot out into the vacuum of space. And that's, that's the feel you want. After the second chorus, it does play the E. It sort of resolves and it lets the whole song cool down before building up tension with that drum pattern. So after the chorus, there's another verse, then there's another chorus. That one's a little bit longer. And then there's the famous riff. Here's that riff slowly. Three, four. So that's just an A, walk up to the C, A, B, C, down to the G, B, A, G, and then A, B, and then E. And it's important, the E, it could be tempting to play that E on an upbeat, but it's really, it's on the downbeat. So make sure you get the rhythm right on that. So it plays it like that a couple times, 
And then after the third time, it goes before the drums really get going, slides up to this E and hits that E four times. And then it plays a variation on that pattern, which is. So that's just hitting the A a few times at first instead of just once. And then it's just switching into eighth notes for these E's. And then doing a slide back up to the A. I like to use a pick on this one and I feel like it's really... If you really want to get that sound, I feel like you got to pick down by the bridge right here. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I have other videos on my channel. Please like and subscribe. Thanks.